Hey everyone, how are you today? So this is where we left off with the animations of the player. Now we're going to create movement. Well, the engine does it, but we're going to get it started. First thing I just wanted to point out, the question is, can Pixel Game Maker use any of the RPG Maker RTP? And the it was answered by a dev and it's a yes and no situation. Basically, if you own RPG Maker, you can create a new game and you can export all the assets, including the sound effects, everything. And you can use those in Pixel Game Maker. Now the DLC is a little different because I think those are the publisher's licenses. And since they use different publishers, I, it would be safe to assume no. Because usually they say RPG Maker only you have to check into that. But the base assets, yes. Another thing is I'm going to change the title of this video. It's it's not really a Zelda-like tutorial. While it is showing the top-down way of doing things, this is actually more an RM bridge to Pixel Game Maker. Because, let's face it, coming from RPG Maker to Pixel Game Maker, it's not very user-friendly. There's a lot of differences. So I'm going to change the title and we'll just go forward with that. This is a RM bridge to Pixel Game Maker. And with that said, let's now create our player. So we have the animation with a couple of different motions and we've set up all the frames and everything. So we go to objects and now we've got to create our player. You can right click and add object. You can add object right here. We're going to add an object. We are going to call it player. We're going to select what animation group. It's the player. So we want all the motions that are inside the player animation. We want access to them is what we want. And what kind of an object is it? Is it in the player group or the enemy group? These are where you can set up differences. We want it player group. And is this object controlled by an input device? Yes, because this is going to be our main player. You can have multiple and then have the input controlling multiple. Never tried it, but I'm we're just gonna do this for the player. These are basic detections. So you've got your attack detection. Who do you want it to affect? Right now it's defaulted enemy group, but you can also add the player group. I'm I'm unsure if you can add more groups. Um hopefully I can figure that out someday. Uh wall detections for the different groups as well, and then also wall detections for the tiles. So we want all those. We'll hit OK. And you will notice that it auto populates a basic loop for doing an idle animation and a walking animation. Now the walking animation is not set up. You have to come in here and set it up. but this really does no good. I want to, we can use this to show the basic logic of setting up a loop for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete, delete them and we're just going to start over. And so with a blank page, you can right click and add an action or you can click down here and you can think of action I guess I'll take a moment here. You can think of an action as an event page. Basically, when you create an object, you're, in RM, it's like you're creating an event on the scene, except for you're not putting it on the scene. You're creating it like in a spawn or copy map. You can think of it like that. So you're making it in a spawn or copy map where you can use this in any scene that you want. And within your event, your object, you can now create event pages. And so when you add an action, this is now very similar to an event page. And you can name this event page. We're gonna name this one idle because the first state of this object is going to be idle. In RM, it, this is all done for you. It knows the idle state, use these sprite sheets. When you're walking, use these sprite sheets. Pixel Game Maker, you noticed it came up with a template, but you still kind of got to set it up a little bit. So we got our idle 
event page one, you can just sing, or action one. We want it to use the motion of idle. You can also color them if you want. We'll just uh, leave them at gray. Change this, just like that. And you can go even further and you can actually set a direction. Now, we don't want it to set a direction because we want the input to set the direction. So we're gonna leave it at not set. You can also see that there is some runtime actions. Now, while I won't get into all these right now, the runtime actions right here are similar to the event commands. And you can see that there are a list of event commands that you can use for this player object to do certain things. Uh, we'll be using change variables or not, actually not on this one. Yeah, we'll just be using actually nothing for just walking in idle. We'll, we'll get into this when we do like smooth camera and transparency behind big objects, stuff like that. So yeah, we don't need to use any runtime, but this is where your runtime event commands will go. And they run similar to RM where it's top down. So now we have idle, we can actually now use this object. It has a sprite attached to it. We can use this object. And I just wanna show you the base of what a controllable object does. So let's go to scenes and let's click on the objects tab and now you will notice that your object is now in the the scenes. You can now use it. So you can click on it and then you can place the object wherever you want. And first thing you'll notice is that it popped down on this on your object tab down here. This is a list of your current objects that are on this current scene. So if you clicked on this scene and you go to objects, it's now empty. You go to your starting map, click objects, and now you've got a list. It's basically your event list, you can think of it as. So one thing that I was having a problem with at first was, I, I, you know, I want to move this player now. I want to move him over here. Well, whenever I tried to select him, I just would keep creating new players. So if you're stuck, you can click on this object, or actually, yeah, you can't even click on the object. So to select him, you have to right click off, then you can move him to where you want. And now we have all these other objects that we don't need. So we can just go over here. Also, just so you know, you can move them around. You can add a folder and have an organized system for your objects. You can make one invis uh, you can make them invisible or not. So let's delete these two because we don't need two players and let's just click play the play test buttons over here you just click it and it auto goes and you'll notice a few things right off the bat first our character is small so I messed up on the sizing and we can change that just right in the engine I'll show you in a minute but two if you use the arrow keys you can now move and you're not doing a walking animation, but you can move. So the movement is built in to the engine when you give when you give the object that controlled by input selection. So we got a few things to change. First off, let's change its scale. Let's get it him more normal size. So you can come over to scale and you can scale him. I want to scale him, let's do 200%. All right, and now let's cook play. A lot better. And it kept the pixels all in line. Everything just looks really nice. All right, but he still doesn't have a walking animation. So let's change that. So we are going to go back to our objects. And we have this event page, which is idle. Now let's create another event page that, or action, that is walk. And let's set the motion to walk. And again, let's not set a specific direction so that the input will control it. Now you'll notice that this event, this action 
is transparent. And you'll also notice that this one has rounded corners. The rounded corners means that this is where it's going to start. This is your starting page. It will default to idle. So how do we get it to go to walk? So you can click on idle and you can think of this as a condition on an event page. Remember you'd have an event page too, but that wouldn't start until a switch was on or a certain thing became the condition. So we need to do that here. So let's add a link and let's link it to walk. And you can move these around, make them as organized as you want. You can, yeah, you just move them any, any way. And right now it's, it has no action. So let's see if it does anything. Let's go back to our scenes. Let's click play test. Actually, we don't have to go back to our scenes. Let's stay in objects and play test. You can see that, yep, it does nothing still. So we need to add some conditions. So let's go here. Here's some other conditions and there's a lot to just experiment with and and find out i i unfortunately don't know all of them but what i do know are these ones <laughs> and this is uh input related ones so you can say the following input has been inputted and you can come here to the control i've tried this i couldn't get it to work i, I might have been doing it wrong so i'm just going to do it the this way up and then if it is pressed we're going to hit okay now you can add the down, you can add the left, you can add the right. Now, a couple things to be careful of is over here, first off up here, condition to change. Change if all of these conditions are met. So if you have some input conditions and then some other conditions, let's just throw one in here. Let's do player's HP is zero. Let's just do that. Oh, player is zero. There we go. If you have this one selected, then you, you won't change to walking animation until the player is zero and all of these buttons are pressed. The reason why is because it's and, and, and. So... So we have to be very careful how we set this up. So what we want for this is we want to change if any of these conditions are met. We do not want this other condition because we don't need it. Which by the way, just real quick, if you go over here, this right now is if the player is zero. If you click on this, it means if the player is not zero. And then you can also click on this and this actually just skips it completely. So if you are testing and stuff, it will just, and, and you're like, well, I want to keep this on here, but I, I want to turn it off right now. You can click that and it will turn it off. So right now we just don't want it, but we want these to be, or if you're pressing up or down or left or right. Okay. And, and then it will put it into the walking animation. So let's test that. And there we go. Our player is walking. He now has a walking animation. But now when you stop, he's still walking. Because you never turned that action off. You never transitioned it back. Or if we're talking in event pages, you never took off the condition for that page. So let's add a link back to idle. And just move it. And this one will be, if no input is there, then it will go back to idle. And so now let's just test it. And you're walking, and then you stop, and now you're in idle. You'll notice that it just stops in every direction. You can go. The screen, is it's adjusting to diagonal movement. And you are set up for pixel movement in Pixel Game Maker automatically. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Next one, hopefully we can dive into some hit 
collision and, and wall detections and go from there.